Buffingham Bush. Seymour Mace. Miles Jump. Michael Me. First, Danny Bevin. Oh, I made some bad decisions. When I was 18, I made a serious vocational error. Joined a cult. <laughs> United States Army. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know how stupid I was? I joined the army because I was tired of my parents telling me what to do. <laughs> Trying to run my life. Sign here, dipshit. We'll run it for you. <laughs> you guys really understand me. <laughs> they say America's different now because it's blue and red. I think it's the same because it's still about color, right? It's not much different than when you guys owned it. <laughs> Back then it was 13 colonies. That was before Operation Native American Freedom. Right. <laughs> yeah, when I was in, it was a different time, man. It was a different, different foreign policy. Back then it was, give me that. That was pretty much our foreign policy. <laughs> that was during Panama, right? Operation Just Cause. Anybody remember that one? What a great name. Operation Just Cause, you could take that either way. Either it was a just cause or we did it just fucking cause we could, you know? <laughs> We're gonna be popping some tents in your neighborhood. You might want to spread out. <laughs> but at least that was a name, Just Cause, Desert Storm. Those are names, man. Desert, you can turn that into a tattoo. <laughs> Get a Desert Storm, Desert Storm. <laughs> Operation Iraqi Freedom, what are you gonna do with that? <laughs> yeah, can you put a brown guy carrying a TV? Can you do that? <laughs> no? That's the new foreign policy now, right? The new foreign policy, sell freedom. That's it. Export freedom, what a noble cause. I don't know how good we're gonna be at it though, because usually we bomb the shit out of people first. <laughs> you ask any salesman, that's a hard close after that. <laughs> hey, Colin, how come you didn't get the deal? Well, a lot of them were dead. You know? <laughs> the rest of them didn't really trust us. <laughs> you remember what we did in Afghanistan? We were dropping bombs and food. What? Where I come from, that's called chum. Palms and food, is that the best we can do? I got a better idea. Why don't we drop nothing but ecstasy and glow sticks? There you go. Wait an hour, turn on the music, you know? You could send in one guy to change the flag. We love you, American. Whatever. Bombs and food. You know what the food was? The protein source? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. We dropped peanut butter on people who live in a fucking desert. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Some sort of grout. <laughs> so strange. You know, people always ask me, why did you pick that guy? You know, to be the president. Doesn't matter who it is. Why'd you pick that guy? There's no choice. Every election in America is like a choice between Bert and Ernie. There's nobody to vote for. <laughs> There's no heroes. There's no Thomas Jefferson's, Abraham Lincoln's, George Washington, or my favorite Benjamin Franklin. Never a president, but an American hero. A writer, an inventor, an ambassador, a politician, revolutionary. And he died of syphilis. Yes. <laughs> That's a hero. You know what's ironic? His picture's on the $100 bill, and for $100, you can get syphilis! <laughs> so strange, man. I love this job. It's weird, you know? My wife tells me what I do is sell hope. She says I bring people hope because I allow people to look at things in a different perspective, give them a different outlet, maybe connect with some of their convictions. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck she's talking about either. <laughs> but she's pretty, so I follow her around like a puppy. <laughs> and she's always trying to prove it to me. She took me to the Hoover Dam. I'd never been there before because it's a dam. <laughs> and we're in Vegas, and why are we leaving the strip? I don't give a sh what? <laughs> but she's right, it's an incredible structure built on the Colorado River. The state line of Nevada and Arizona splits it right down the middle. At the time that it was built, it was the greatest dam in the world. 
The amount of concrete in it, if you laid it out flat in a straight line, would build a two-lane highway six inches deep from New York to San Francisco. It was built in four years during the Great Depression, and 96 men lost their lives. And as I looked at it, I was in awe of the determination of the human spirit. Then I turned around, and I saw a guy behind me going, I'm in Nevada. I'm in Arizona. I'm in Nevada. I'm in Arizona. Look at there, honey. Hope. Uh, I was in a pub in Ireland where I'm from. This guy came up to me and he tried to pick a fight with me, but I actually got the wrong end of the stick at the start. He came up to me and he went, hey, shit for brains. And I honestly thought he was proposing a swap. <laughs> He goes, you're looking at my girlfriend. I said, no, I'm not. He says, you are. You're looking at my girlfriend. I said, which one's your girlfriend? Is that her at the bar? No, no, behind her. With the red top, is it? No, go right, go right. <laughs> you fucking blind, do you? I should say by the time when she saw the girlfriend, she looked like, looked like something out of a fashion show. Uh, she looked like the designer. <laughs> so he says, you're staring at my girlfriend. I said, honestly, I'm not. He goes, you're staring at my girlfriend, you faggot. I said, I always thought it was an either or situation. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I try and talk logic to these guys. It's like telling knock knock jokes to a Bedouin. <laughs> looking like this guy just wants to fight me. You might have guessed looking at me, I'm not into violence. Uh, I'm a pacifist by physique. <laughs> Anyway, I'm from, uh, I'm from a place called uh, Cork, uh, Cork City in Ireland, and I moved over, I live in London now, I moved over to London. I found a little big change from Ireland. I find, I find a little a bit aggressive now, I have to say. There's a lot of racism in London. Maybe it's kind of new, I'm a bit sensitive, but you see a lot of racist graffiti around. It's really not nice, you see things like, you know, um, Romanians out, Muslims go home, HMV clear out. <laughs> it's quite intimidating, really. Um, and when I first came over, I was living with a Dutch guy. Now, when I say I was living with him, I don't mean the biblical sense, because uh, there are no Dutch people in the Bible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I said to him, um, what part of Holland are you from? I was being friendly, and he said to me, there's no such place as Holland. It's the Netherlands. I thought that was a bit snotty, to be honest. Uh, the way he explained it to me is that it's Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, and that's Benilux. I suppose it can't be Belgium, Holland, Luxembourg, because that would be Bahalux. <laughs> I'm interested in different, uh, different countries. Um, and because and, uh, the Irish are beginning to the idea of Europe. Uh, we're all Europeans, isn't it fantastic? We have so much in common with the other Europeans. But I actually find it more in common with the British. Uh, and I'm not just saying that uh, since I come over here. Because we like to drink in Ireland, and you like to drink over here. Continental Europe, different story. Give you an example, I was living with a French guy uh, when I was in Dublin. And one night I had a conversation with him, and I would not have this, I think, with an Irish person. Uh, probably not with a British person either. Let's see what you think. Half eight on a Thursday night, there was a bunch of us in the house. I turned to the French guy and I said, do you want to go for a pint? <laughs> Standard Irish question. The answer was not an excuse I'd heard before. The answer was, no thanks, I'm not thirsty. <laughs> it had literally never occurred to us. <laughs> that you might have to be thirsty to go drinking. Um, <laughs> different, different cultural things. His idea, being from the continent, his idea of entertainment, glass of wine and a good meal. And that's the difference in France, food is cuisine, and in Ireland, it's lining. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, because you know, I, I think you know, the Irish like to drink, the British like to drink. It's always interesting the kind of image a nation has of itself. Uh, I'll give you an example, I met an American on a plane a few years ago, and the American said, well, of course, we Americans were well known for our drinking. <laughs> and I said, are you now? <laughs> and they said, oh, you know, the Yanks were a party people. 
we like to go out and crack a cold one. Now, the first time I heard that phrase, I thought it was a reference to necrophilia. <laughs> My name is uh, my name's Miles Jack, and I'm uh, I'm privileged not not just to be here, but uh, in general. <laughs> I, I really am very lucky indeed. I um, I was walking down the street the other day, and uh, somebody somebody shouted, "You posh twat!" <laughs> and I thought, you know, how did how did they realise? <laughs> and then I then I noticed that one of the minders in my entourage, she'd. Um, He'd hit this bloke in the face, you know, with the, the cuff of his wax jacket whilst, um, whilst shooing him out of my way. <laughs> Rather large crowd of people gathered around and started hurling abuse at me, and then the, the rest of the journey was really rough because the, the two men carrying my sedan chair broke into a run. <laughs> Quite suddenly. Obviously not the most startling original line. I was walking down the street the other day. A lot of comedians do use it. I, I think it probably can be used, but at the same time, it's room for modification. You know, so instead of I was walking down the street the other day, you might have, uh, I was walking up the street the other day, or I was cycling along an avenue, or I was circumventing a crescent. <laughs> or indeed, my own all-time personal favourite, I was riding naked on horseback the other day uh, across a leafy glade. That was, uh, that was big in the 1800s, that one. You know, one of those things that's gone out of fashion, I suppose, and uh, believe you me, I know all about fashion. I was actually, uh, actually brought up in a village. Uh, I used to get woken up every morning by the sound of ah, bah, 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 bah. And we, we never actually had any chickens or anything like that. But my, my parents were always very keen to promote the idea that we were real village people. <laughs> not, not the village people, obviously. They, <laughs> they were New York based, we're East Anglia. And, <laughs> real village people nonetheless. They, they do say that an Englishman's home is his castle. Now, I don't think that's entirely accurate. Uh, only, only three of my homes are castles. <laughs> One of those is in France, so uh, technically it's a chateau. <laughs> anyway, I had, to, uh, I had to leave the countryside in the end. I just got too frightened. What, what happened was I, I attracted a stalker. Yeah, it was rather like in that American film, Fatal Attraction. I uh, went back to the house one night and she'd, she'd spit-roasted my peacock. <laughs> Which is bloody rude, right? <laughs> So that, that spit was there for the hog roast, and according to Cook, completely the wrong base. No idea, right? Probably doesn't even own a butter knife. I was absolutely appalled. And not a little frightened. I moved away to the city. Uh, the city's, you know, it's a bit of a culture shock for me coming to the city. I mean, uh, it's deeply humbling to realise that there's, there's always somebody worse off than yourself. Uh, at the same time, it's bloody fantastic to realise that there are thousands of you. I must. <laughs> no, it's amazing what you can get for your money on the streets, actually. Uh, beaten shitless sometimes. <laughs> but seriously, I got, I got mugged the other day. This, this chap attacked me with a knife. I don't know why he thought a knife was necessary. His accent was bloudy terrifying. <laughs> it's terribly embarrassing when you're in a confrontation of this sort and yet you find yourself going, I'm terribly sorry, I'm going to have to say that again. <laughs> no, no, I, I really can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> Come on, council house man, project! Turned out he was saying, give me your money. I said, what, all of it? <laughs> Most of it's tied up in land. <laughs> Ended up writing a check. Yeah. <laughs> but before I go, I, I think I ought to say, I think a lot of the ladies in here, and, uh, possibly some of the women as well, are looking at me. <laughs> and you're thinking, is he or isn't he? Is he or isn't he? Well, I've got to be honest with you, ladies. I, I am looking for a cleaner. <laughs> My name's Seymour. I come from Newcastle. <laughs> Wasn't a joke. <laughs> I really do come from Newcastle. Uh, I don't just put the accent on to appear sexy. <laughs> uh, ooh, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself before I go on. I come from a long line of orphans. <laughs> now, you can have excuse, right? If you see he's doing this a lot tonight, uh, I'm not mad. It's just that I'm used to being attacked. <laughs> 
I just get, it comes with the territory when you look like this. Uh, <laughs> funnily enough, right, that, that's why I started wearing this badge. Because I thought, logically, nobody's going to attack a sheriff, are they? <laughs> but ironically, I get attacked more often now, so <laughs> it's a crazy world we're living in. Figure that one out. Uh, now, you, you, you might be surprised to find out that I'm single. <laughs> I know. Uh, and, and, like, I know a lot of comedians say that they're single and uh, audience are aware of the fact that they're not, they're in a relationship or they're married or something like that. But it's just funny to say that you're single. But you are looking at me and you're thinking, he's not making it up. <laughs> and, like, people say it's all right to be single in this day and age, usually married people. Uh, but that's bullshit, cos nobody's ever come up to me and went, Oh, Seymour! Oh, you make a lovely single! <laughs> I could see you being by yourself for the rest of your life. <laughs> it won't make someone very happy. <laughs> so, f f funnily enough, I've, uh, I I I sh I I've got the same name as a serial killer. Well, not yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, do, you ever, do you ever walk around town and pretend you've got a prosthetic leg? It's brilliant. Try it, right? People get out your way in that. Hold doors open for you. Thanks very much, mate. It's just a little game I like to play when I go shopping because I get really stressed by surrounded by people and that, so I have to relieve my tension. And uh, I play a few town centre games. Here's another good one. Try this out because you won't get sectioned. It's brilliant. Uh, as you're walking home from shopping, right, keep trying to turn into the Hulk. But look really pissed off when you can't. Right? <laughs> so you're walking home. Ah! 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 <laughs> Shit. <laughs> But my favourite town centre came, right? You'll all try this, right? See how many old women you can get to turn around and look at you by shouting the name Jean in a high-pitched voice. <laughs> oh, Jean! <laughs> Some of them takes them a bit longer. <laughs> anyway, I've got to go now, cos I have to get back to Newcastle before the curfew. <laughs> like, I'm gonna rape anyone. Um, <laughs> Before I go, you, you've been a brilliant audience, uh, really good. You know, if I, think, I think if you stick at it, give it a couple of years. <laughs> you mean like an audience at the Albert Hall, something like that. Uh, just don't do what most audiences do, have one good night and then split up and never see each other again. <laughs> now, we'd like to ask a serious question, wouldn't we, Topping? We, have, we certainly have, Butch. What? What do you do if you come home and find a strange man in your house? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's happened to me, but yes. sometimes they're not wanted. No. And uh, I've had a couple of burglars in. I had one last week. He was an, uh, he was an Irish burglar. He was my third burglar. <laughs> um, did he take anything, Butch? <laughs> no, he just went through the motions. <laughs> If a burglar comes into what your do you house, do? You uh, do you attack them? Do you hit them? What people do you do? are not too sure what the law is. No, are no. So we've actually written a little song to help you should you find yourself in this predicament. If the crime rate is still soaring and you're questioning your rights, here's some ministerial advice we've been bestowed. It's for after you after dark, and it's only for a lark and a shyster has light-fingered your abode. Please don't be beastly to the burglars. <laughs> They're only trying to take what isn't theirs. Leave a flask of tea and cake as your valuables they take. Put a welcome mat at the bottom of your stairs. Please don't be shirty to the lifters. 
It's only Father Christmas in reverse. Don't risk setting off your asthma as they make off with your plasma because television's only getting worse. Never try to apprehend. Use the children to defend. Cos they never go to jail when they abuse. <laughs> The intruder may attack them, but they're likely not to smack them. And if they do, they know they mustn't leave a brood. <laughs> Please don't get feisty with a felon. No booby traps protecting all you own. Don't electrify your fence. They'll seek extra recompense, for they've every right to safety in your home. <laughs> Never swing a sword as a swindler. And you'll make burglars' realm as highly rated. Give the man a massage as he's coming up your passage. <laughs> Make sure your exit sign is well illuminated. <laughs> if you've any time to spare, leave a handy questionnaire they can fill in when they want to take a break. Could he open all the locks on your safe deposit box? Was your laptop good enough for him to take? So, please don't be beastly to the burglars. Don't suggest we hang them by a rope. If the figures aren't a fix, then by 2026 we'll all be thieving bastards without hope. But we cannot blow the whistle, cos we've checked in at the thistle and checked out with half the towels and the soap. 